So for almost four years, I own one of the most valuable digital real estate properties on the internet, which is a one letter name on Instagram, at G. The benefits of having a one letter username were huge, but it also came with some peril. You might be surprised at some of them, but uh, in this video, I'm gonna be telling you the whole story and how I got the name, my experience with it, and then how one day in the middle of the night, it vanished. I don't know. Do you know what happened to it? I don't know. But yeah, two years later, at G is still missing. It's still inactive. It never resurfaced. I probably sent a hundred emails to Instagram. Actually, maybe more like a thousand. I filled out their form hundreds of times. I've never heard back once, so the whole thing's been just kind of a uh, mystery. To me. So back in 2015, I was super heavy in Instagram. I, uh, I started a bunch of pages for my app brands and I realized how incredibly easy it was to build pages back then. Like all you would have to do was post, right? And then you disappear for four hours, come back to Instagram, you have like 2,000 extra followers. It was crazy. And it was also extremely lucrative. And so I started building and accumulating pages beyond the scope of just like my app brands. And I started, uh, I had kind of a network of pages. I had uh, meme pages, uh, interior design pages, travel pages, beauty pages. I mean, I even had a page, a friends TV meme account page. Um, but eventually I ended up selling all of the pages that I had because A, it was a nightmare to run. It was like a full-time job on top of a full-time job. And B, I felt like I was at the mercy of the Instagram algorithm. You know, in 2012, Facebook tweaked their algorithm and like a lot of these big page owners, I guess you wanna call them, they, their business pretty much shut down overnight. So I was fearful of the same happening uh, with Instagram. But actually fast forward to now, it's sort of funny because Instagram has embraced these meme pages, right? They've put like their support behind them. Um, so I was wrong and my worries never kind of manifested. Eventually I started accumulating OG usernames and for the uninitiated, those are just like super clean handles. Maybe it's like a common word or it's a few letters. Uh, for example, I owned at Epic and at Action. Um, I owned a few others, I just kind of forget now, those I ended up selling as well. But basically, I, I just understood the value of like a really clean, simple handle, right? In the same way people would invest in physical real estate today, I was basically investing in digital real estate, which is like nothing new, like people have done it with dot coms and TLDs and whatnot. Um, but it's just the thesis that I had was that these names were gonna explode. So in 2015, I bought the name at G for 7,500 bucks and at the time, like, that might sound like a lot for a social media page, but I couldn't believe it. Like I knew it was gonna be an instant 10, 20 X investment. I thought this is like the easiest money I'll ever make, right? Um, which turned out to be semi-true because while my thesis was correct, the name was gonna skyrocket in value, um, <clears throat> I didn't end up selling it. And so I got left with nothing, but I was getting multiple offers, serious offers in the six, like, well into the six figure range for the name, which was absolutely nuts. Anyways, you know, hindsight is 2020. Should have parted ways with the name, but I didn't. The idea was to turn Ad G into kind of like a media page, like a hype beast or a, um, a complex, which I was really inspired by at the time. And I figured, like I said, man, like even if it's a complete failure of a media page, like I could still flip it, turn around and sell it for, for a ton of money, like in the future. Um, so that's what I started doing. I started posting a bunch of like complex type, like culturally relevant uh, content onto the page and it blew up. I think within a few weeks, Odie. I think within a few weeks, it was uh, at 50,000 followers and the organics were unreal. Like it was getting 100 to 150,000 organic views on the page per week with no promo, no ad spend, no anything. So what I decided to do shortly after is turn it into my personal brand, like my personal page. I said, why not, you know? Like it seemed to be a good idea. It had a built-in audience. It was verified with the help of the same person that I bought it from, you know, seemed like a good idea. It was a pretty cool feeling, you know, having the name at G, like it just felt kind of cool. Like people would ask me for my Instagram and I got to say, at G, you know, they, they'd wait like for the rest of the letters thinking I was about to spell something out and I was like, no, no, that's it, at G, you know, it was like a flex, it was cool. So over the next few years, what I did, I started traveling the world uh, and got serious about creating content and which was awesome. I developed a voice in the niche, sort of in like the travel and lifestyle niche. Um, I had a lot of brands interested in working with me. Uh, I met a lot of really cool people, established a lot of awesome business relationships and otherwise. Uh, I even had a bunch of celebrities randomly following the page, so it was a lot of good in owning this name, but it was also a lot of bad in owning at G. Firstly, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I always felt like a bit of an imposter, like the whole thing was a bit of a gimmick. Um, you know, even, even a lot of the DMs I was having was like these 
kind of like cool people. I think they probably thought I was a lot cooler than I was, <laughs> you know? So, um, the, it always just felt kind of uneasy holding the name. Like I just felt like people were following me because of the gimmick of a cool one letter username and not because of me or my content. Um, and, and you know, we could debate whether it was bad, it was good, it was real, it was not real. But the point is that this sort of like baseline uneasy feeling that I had just kind of persisted. Um, and I don't know, I guess it was just like a lot of pressure in the name, if that makes sense. It might not, but that's, you know, it's just what it was. <laughs> but the worst part about owning the name by far is how, because of how valuable the handle was and how uh, much more valuable it was getting, like by the day, I was the target of a whole army of hackers. And I put that in quotes because reality is just a bunch of kids hiding behind a VPN, uh, trying to social engineer people, right? You know, for example, during the entire time I owned the account on the daily, probably 20 to 50 emails of people trying to get into, into the account and like all of my other stuff, right? So people were trying to get into my Gmails, my Instagram, my, but most of these were harmless, just like, uh, you know, it looks like you need help logging in or click here to, to restore your password. But, but, you know, I didn't fall for any of those like phishing attempts or anything like that, so it wasn't a big deal. What was really bad though was when I got simmed or sim swapped, which is still a huge problem today. So just in a little bit, I'm gonna explain to you like exactly what it is and how to protect yourself from it because please learn from my mistakes. It is actually some serious, especially if you hold something of value online, right? Basically, sim swapping is when somebody calls up your carrier and pretends to be you, and when they get asked for the PIN or the password, you know, they just charm their way into to the account somehow. And it used to be a lot easier back in the day, but I would speak to some of these hackers, right? Like they'd call me anonymously uh, behind a, a voice changer and I'd talk to them. And they were like, yeah, we just call Verizon like 20 to 30 times. Eventually there's somebody, some sucker who's gonna let us in. They'd get into the account. So one time it happened to me, they switched my phone over to theirs, which was a burner and they had access to everything. At G, um, all of my other Instagram handles, they got into my emails, my uh, bank accounts. In, in one instance, they got into my Coinbase and this was especially terrible. Now, they took all my crypto and at the time it wasn't like a crazy amount. But like today, I don't even want to calculate how much they, but look, let me pause the story right here. Cause I want to mention that, you know, our, the carriers have smartened up a bit, but simming is still a big problem. And there's an easy, easy way uh, to make sure it doesn't happen to you. Uh, what I recommend is in any instance where you have two factor authentication, make sure it's token based and not text based. So if you're protecting an account by having an SMS sent and verified through your phone, don't do that because you can get SIM swap. Instead use something like Google Authenticator. Trust me, like pause the video if you have to and do this now, because it's very important. So anyways, back to the story. I did have a friend at Instagram during this time, and so he was able to help me restore all my Instagram accounts so there was no more problem there, and then I switched them all to token-based off. Um, so, you know, I was never a victim of a hack again. I still had like the almost daily anonymous phone calls, you know, threatening me, threatening to SWAT my family. Like it was just a nightmare dealing with these kids, you know? So let's fast forward to December, 2018. I had just broke in 200,000 followers on Instagram. I had recently just gotten another very serious offer from, from a Saudi like Royal, I think he was, to buy the name, again, well into the six figures. Um, I was getting approached by brands left and right to do like brand deals. The, the page was actually like quite profitable. Um, I was getting free trips all over the world with it, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, things were going really well. Um, but then a few days before Christmas 2018, I remember exactly I was sitting on my mom's couch and I went to like log into the account or whatever and it said the account didn't exist or that I'd been logged out, that it was disabled, I forget the exact the exact wording. And that was it. That was the last time Ad G's ever been available again. It has not resurfaced since. Nobody owns it. It took a few months, but eventually got back onto Instagram. My handle now is at RP Nixon. Um, but you know, I just, I have a deep distrust of Facebook right now. I'm just not a fan of the company. You know, they're not innovating anymore. Everything that every new feature that they add is just a complete copy from other innovative brands like TikTok, Clubhouse, Snapchat, etc. I think they've sort of lost their way. Um, do I still like Instagram? Yeah, you know, I still enjoy it. It's still important to me. I still think it's a valuable tool for businesses and brands. Um, and also, I will say that the new CEO, Adam Masseri, he has done a lot of good. Uh, he's focused on combating uh, mental health issues and bullying and making the app a safer place for kids and stuff like that. So that's really cool. I commend him for that. And hopefully him and his team find their way again and steer the ship in the right direction. But here's one thing I want to mention that's really important. If you 
uh, are on social media, especially if you're a creator and you have an audience, you're at the mercy of that platform. So learn from my story, make sure to diversify, right? Uh, whether that be on other social platforms like YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Clubhouse, etc. Or maybe if you want to have like a little more ownership of your audience, I would start uh, an email or a text-based SMS communications list because you know you, you could get wiped out overnight. I've seen it happen to a lot of people, not just myself. Anyways, if you like the story, and I know it's a little random, but I thought it deserved to be told, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like photography, tech, or design, make sure you subscribe, because I got a lot of really cool videos in that realm coming out I think you really like. And if you don't, you can unsubscribe in a few months if I'm wrong. No harm, no foul, no Is that the expression? I'm not sure. Anyways, thanks for hanging with me. Catch you later, babe.